Hello. Hey, man, what's up? What's going on? Not much, man. Just getting up, starting my day. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. This is your first interview today? Yep. Lucky you. Nothing like the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Impact is imminent. Uh, May 20th release, your 19th release. Um, how much different is uh, this release than any other? Oh, it's just, I think, I think the pandemic make, makes it ultimately what's different because <laughs> never been in that kind of environment. Right. I mean, and when you write and do everything in that environment, it's, it's bound to affect what you did. So it's, it's different in, right. in that regard. I mean, the way I look at, at all records, are, they're like time capsules. Right. They're, they're, and, and, and for most people, that's what, what it all is like, you know, when I listen to Deep Purple and Rock, I mean, I'm living, I'm, my brain goes to 1971. Right, yeah. Automatically, it, it, it's like, okay. Oh. It, it, so music and music and, um, and music puts time in, in, pers in perspective. Right. Uh, so in, 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 in every case, there, there's a difference because you're, it's never quite the same every time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, because you're using, you're, you're doing, uh, you're looking for subject matter. You're going to, every subject's going to end up being different. So, because you already did it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool. Oh, cool. Uh, I don't, I, I to, to explain the, the other aspects were that the time. Right. What I did differently and what I've been doing for quite a few a few albums is uh, normally like what I would say normally for a, a stretch of albums I would write all the lyrics and then I'd work with the producer to see how they all fit and what we could do with them right yeah um, because then that way I'm not <laughs> it's not that I don't feel creative I wrote the lyrics so it's not right, about, yeah. it's not about creativity it's about right. it's about musicality what is going to set uh, what's going to set the world on fire melodic note wise right yeah and 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 certainly if you work with with producers they can help you choose the right notes oh, wow. <laughs> which is what their job is son yeah. of a bitch <laughs> oh, but, well. uh, no so i'm just explaining to you sort of the technical technical differences so right. what happened what happened in this particular case is I wrote the songs in the studio, in the, in the rehearsal studio. Right, yeah. Uh, and recorded them onto uh, a little small, little two-track uh, Tascam little uh, recorder, right? Right, yeah, wow. And, and it's, the, it's live in the rehearsal, and we've set it up so that when you listen back, because we've got a full stereo in the rehearsal room, we can check, check the mix to see right. that, that we've got the right mix. So... We, in in eventuality, and in, in the way that we we've got it actually down to a science, we know exactly how to record ourselves, what the volumes have to be, everything, so that it comes out perfect for these for these two track bed tracks. Right. So uh, I think now from the from that, right. I, just, I just send I just send those bed tracks to my to my email. Right. Yeah. And then the email, I pick it up in my computer at home and load the files into a multi-track recorder. Now, the first, the first video is uh, Go Shadow. Uh, is there a particular reason why you picked that song over others? Uh, that's, that's probably a good question. Uh, but, you know, in a, in a certain sense, I don't, really, I don't really have an answer for that because I think it just kind of stood out as being being really special right yeah <laughs> wow and the second track uh, i mean uh you know the second single is uh take a lesson uh which is one of my favorite tracks off the album i, I think it's very powerful and it could be a great opener for a, a show you know well we were almost thinking of using the the, the beginning entry and just start our song our our are set like that, which is right. what, it, which is what it was. So in its in reality, we we put that fr that front with Dave 
scroll in there and right. it wasn't it wasn't it, and this is the best part it wasn't wasn't our idea at all oh yeah i had n nothing to do with it it was i was shocked just like you were <laughs> right, yeah yeah I, I, it's an amazing song i i really enjoyed it you know um yeah the the producer had remembered uh, you know york had remembered uh the the speech that dave Grohl gave at the right. Spirit Awards for the movie, because he'd seen us play metal on metal. It, it was on the internet. Right, so, yeah. so what happened was he he the songs take a lesson. So he, he went, oh, I remember. And he went and grabbed the speech and put it on the front of the song, called me into the into the room and goes, What do you think? Right. I said, uh uh. <laughs> That's how that sort of came to be, because the song is sort of about, and not sort of, it is about my perspective of what it was like to do what I've done, right? musically and my history, and and the things that I had to put up with, and all the all the nays all the naysayers, I guess, all right? The, yeah. Wow. The, the, all the bullshit you got to put up with, right? So it has a it has a good message. <laughs> and you got fourteen tracks. That's quite a bit. Yeah, you, four, you know, fourteen songs, and, and you know, I'm I'm listening to each song. I, I'm I'm waiting for the ballad and stuff. But there is none. No, no, you're not gonna really no. get a ballad. It's not gonna really happen. It's not. Uh, it hasn't yet. Right. It has. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's not going to. But it hasn't yet. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I was surprised with Gomez. Uh, you uh, use some horns section and stuff like that. Yeah. Now that's that's a very interesting. That's a very interesting subject. So that you can. You can definitely uh, like like what I'm going to tell you about this. Um, initially, we wrote the song T Bag. Right. Okay? So. We wrote the song "Tea Bag" with them, with them. At least I did with the mindset right. that this is going to be a swing, a swing feel song, sort of like going back to Juggernaut of Justice. But this time we're not going to put horns on it. Right. Okay, that was my intention. But we'll make it quite obvious that it's that boom, 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 boom. You know that right? That, that jazzy sort of stuff. So. Um, so we do it, and and after, and of course, as a three piece, you're playing it live right off the floor. So the guys hearing, the the the, the engineer and the and the and the producer are hearing the whole thing. They're going, "We need a horn section." As soon right. as we started playing, as soon as we started playing the song in the studio, we should bring in the horns. <laughs> and I'm going, "No, no, no!" And I'm resisting it, resisting it. And Martin says, "Look, it, you've got nothing to lose because you know what, my friends who." I'm in the military, uh, in, he was in the military uh, band, right? Right. He was the drummer. And um, <laughs> he got the horn players from the, from the orchestra. And the, the thing was, he goes, you don't like it? Don't use it. It doesn't cost you anything. Right, yeah. So I said, oh, well, okay, bring in the horn section. <laughs> so initially, of course, we had called it tea bag, right? Right. And it, there was no intention of a Gomez. Right. And there was no intention. In fact, we had already yelled tea bag and, and at the beginning of the song. It was all, we were all done. We thought we were done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and they're yeah. going, no, 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 no. Anyway, so as the, they're mixing the record, these are bringing in the, they're bringing in the finished horn section, right? Right. So they get it in, and of course, he puts it up in the mix. It brings, it, brings me into the studio, and, and once again, it's like, you know, <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. So I go, and that's like a different song. Right, yeah. <laughs> it is a different song. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, you know what? In fact, we'll call it Gomez. Now, where we got these names from, Sasha Gervasi, the guy who directed the movie. Right. His nicknames were originally was Tea Bag. He was an English guy, right? Right. Yeah. You know, so it's tea time, and we just got a big laugh out of that. So 
we called him Teabag. And of course, later on, especially after the, the, uh, the, the, when the movie came out, he was just the excitement in his eyes. Just a, it, 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 and he one day he just goes, I've got the best train set on the block and everybody's coming to see it. <laughs> oh, cool, cool, I guess. So I, I just started, we just started laughing and we're going, it's Gomez Adams. Wow. wow. <laughs> so, so we started calling him Gomez and we just have nicknames, you know, that's, oh, yeah. it's, just, it's just what we do for yeah. whatever, you know, so this time I, so we, had, this time I thought we'd, well, we'd use his first nickname because it's one song. I go, fuck, we get to use both, you wow. know, the before and after is perfect. Wow, <laughs> so that's, that's cool. and there, there's, it's quite amazing. And uh, I thought it was really important to have both versions because believe it or not, people don't realize that it's the same bed track. Right. It's, it's definitely a cool song because I'm listening and hearing the horns and, you know, the, all the rest of the stuff, and it's really cool. I like that song. Yeah, very, it, really interesting. I love doing stuff like that. That's that. That's just you see because being born in 1956, I got to see everything from Elvis on. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, I I think it's all fair to me, at least fair to me, that I can use any kind of influence that I want. <laughs> Now you, you you'd, be, let, you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked to know where certain influences of where how lyrics fit and where I was getting ideas to to make lyrics work. Right. Yeah. Wow. And, and it's not it's not about stealing the lyric. It's it's understanding how the rhyme scheme is working in the number of bars. Right. Yeah. Wow. This is this is ex music is extraordinarily mathematical. And you got to look like, and then when you got to look for examples in different equi in, in people's different equations, which are 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 their songs, right? And, yeah. you, and you look at it mathematically. Go, okay, oh, you know. And I mean, that's the best way to to describe what what I'm saying about it lyrically. What are right. the, what are the syllables? Where do the syllables fall? Where does the rhyme fall? Right. Yeah. Oh, everything everything matters because. You're, you've got, there's a certain amount of bars and, and if, okay, the, the prime example, <laughs> the prime example would be, would be the, the first song, right? right. Yeah. It, there, there's a prime example. You know, people listen to that, they don't realize the, the complexity and what, what is actually transpiring, not necessarily, not necessarily, uh, not necessarily, necessarily musically, but but lyrically, uh, ly lyrically and mathematically, right? Yeah. Right? Wow. If, they, if they knew that the, what's going on and why it sounds actually so smooth, right? It, it's. I'm just I'm just trying to explain to you the kind of the technicality and what and what writing is, you know. Right, yeah. and, and and luckily, <laughs> I'm the guitar player, so I don't end up in arguments with the singer. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. I, 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 me, I just listened to the music and I said, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's excellent. And, you know, and then the music blends in with it. And, uh, you know, you got the song, you know, so uh, definitely cool stuff, you know. So um, when you go out on tour, um, is there a particular country that you enjoy the most? That, that's kind of an unfair question. Yeah, don't say can. <laughs> because as soon as I say something, I've alienated everybody else. I don't. Right. I have favorite places. Okay, what's favorite? Then? I have favorite places. I, it's not. It's not. It's not a matter of, and it's not one over the other. It's. It's this one this time. This that, that one next time. You know what I right. mean? That's what it is. Right. right yeah. Wow. You know, as as an example, I love I love London. Right. Yeah. Oh. So last week, I I went to London. Right. Yeah. Wow. Just to hang out. Cool. Um, you know, and of course, um, I'm, it's 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 a beautiful place, man. It's 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 something to take in. You know. Right. Yeah. 
you have any recommendations about like uh, new artists and stuff uh, dealing with record companies? Because you've been in music a long time, so like you got to know something. Yeah, but what I know is from it, 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 it's 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 like asking a producer from uh, from 1965, and he's around today, and he, he, you ask him what Pro Tools is, and he's going to go, huh? Yeah. Cool. So it, 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 it's it, you're asking me about something that. The young, the young whippersnappers, as they would say, right. the young whippersnappers in, in the business and who, who is in the business and are running the business, they they know what's going on, right? And they're the ones. But, but uh, do they know what's going on? No one does, right? They wait till something cracks on the internet and something goes viral, and then they might get involved, or they will get involved, or they'll buy it up, right? You no, know, you might, you might, you might. That might happen, but but very very un unusually, right? You know, and it's it's going to be extraordinarily contemporary. It's not going to be in heavy metal, that's for sure. Right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm I, I'm just talking about the music business in in general. It's, right. Yeah. It, it totally. I I say to any musician, and and you, you can quote me on it that it, you've got better luck in the casinos <laughs> <laughs> wow wow uh you have any uh, uh choice between vinyl download cassette or whatever uh what you prefer oh what do you mean like sound wise and what, what would you listen to do you still like vinyl do you like the download do you like disc what do you like if you don't have if you don't have one to compare against the other. In other words, a dial that you can go analog, digital, cassette. Right. If you don't have an actual dial and hear and hear it all in the same place so that you can hear the tonal differences, right. how, what reference have you got? Right, yeah. Like, wow. I, I ask people, what reference do you have unless you can A, B it? That's right, what you yeah. call it. If you can't A, B it, what reference do you really have? Right, Only yeah. Only your recollection. Right. Only your recollection. And if your recollection is, is really high quality, even when you hear low quality, you still hear the same fucking song. <laughs> I mean, me particularly. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I hate to be so cynical, but it's, right. <laughs> it, it, I just sort of, it, it, it's, it, it just seems, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter as long as I don't know the difference. You right. know what I mean? It, it, it's it's someplace to store sound, right? That's all it is. It doesn't really change the the the, the sound. The song still remains the same. It could be more crackly. It could be less crackly. You might be, you know it could be a little bit hissy. It could it could be completely clean. It's still the same song. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I I don't know how to, and that's that's why why I say that. Unless and unless you, and 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 it depends on what your recollection and what you re remember precisely about what you heard in the other version. Right. Right. So, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> now your uh, tour starts June second in Rhode Island and ends in Chicago on the thirty first of July. Um, yeah. How much difference is touring from back in the day compared to now? Is it a lot easier or? Back in the day? Yeah, like, you know. I, 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 wish, I wish I knew what back in the, exactly what back in the day meant because nothing's really changed. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you still got to, we're still we still travel uh, uh, the hardy way, and in, in other words, get to the gigs on our own with our with our a van and a, and a trailer. Wow! Uh, you know you got to do it. You got to do it and get it done. You stay. You stay at all the uh, the, the the best motels. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hopefully, safe <laughs> motels. Yeah. It's mostly about safe motels, well lit, and all that shit. But just it's there's a science to it. Um, 
you the way that the tours are put together you're you're it's done so that you don't you don't extend yourself so that you you can't do it you know right. what I mean? so and and they're really long they're really long extends really long tours the longest tours i've ever known in my life right yeah. you know when you talk about the old days they were the, the old days like the old old days we drive to a gig probably in a car right, right? And we'd have a five-ton truck with our entire backline PA and lights, right? Yeah. Because that's the old days, right? There was no, there was no PA and lights in the clubs. Right. You were going, you were bringing an entire, an entire setup into the club, and only bands that could do that could play the clubs, right? Yeah, wow. And you know, you've got this. You got to do it one way. You got to do it one way or another. I can be going into all the details about how, but right. that's how that's how the old days worked. So, we had our own PA and lights, and we loaded that five ton truck, and we had two two road crew guys that that drove in the truck, and we'd go to the gig, which could be anywhere from eight to ten hour drive. You get there, uh, you unload you unload into the into the venue. And you set all the stuff up, and then they tell you where the hotel is, right? <laughs> and you're there for a week. Wow! I saw you guys at Rock. You're, you're there for a week. Wow. That's, that's the end of that. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I saw you guys at Rock, Oklahoma, a couple of years ago, maybe more than a couple of years ago. But uh, when you look out at that crowd, all them people, what goes through your mind? Uh, that I wish I could be. That I wish I could be closer. <laughs> <laughs> wow! In, in a certain sense, that it seems that when in a big place, it fe it feels, it actually feels not right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> because because there's there's a huge there's a huge uh, distance. Right. Yeah. From the actual audience, so that you can't look in somebody's eyes and really read what they're what they're thinking. Right, yeah. So that changes your whole feeling. That changes my feeling. Right, yeah. And I'm not sure whether it changes anybody's feeling watching you, but I, I try. Uh, uh, certainly, a great deal of of, of performances is, is eye contact with the audience, and you have to have uh, you have to have that down in a way that it makes everybody feel like you see them and they see you. Right, yeah. And that's connection. That's very, very, that's ultimately the most important. And what I'm saying about large places is there's this connection that I have to overcome. Right, yeah. It, it, it becomes, it's more difficult. Right. It, it's not, it, not and, and it doesn't, doesn't mean impossible. It actually, right. means, it means the opposite. It's just, it's just more of a challenge. Yeah. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. It's more of a challenge, isn't it? Right, um, yeah. Which is not a bad thing, uh, and I'm not saying that I like it more or less. I, it's just I'm just telling you the difference, right? Yeah. Wow. You ask me how I feel. Well, that's how I feel. It feels like a, it's a little bit more, a little bit more pressure. Yeah. Right. Wow. Wow. Is there such thing as a tour rider anymore? A what? Tour rider. <laughs> You know, do you ask for things like you know food? This oh, or... to, yeah. Um, of course there is, but not you don't you don't you're not ridiculous about it. It's actually pretty much within with understanding, like a twenty four bottles of water, right? Know, yeah, uh, wow. towels. These are the most important towels and water. Right. Yeah. Wow. At every gig, man, the better there better be. Right. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Tell me, uh, what's the feeling like when uh, uh, anybody, a young kid, older kid, um, comes up to you and asks for a, like your autograph? I think it. I think it's actually quite extraordinary, and I still, I still, I still feel uncomfortable because I don't. I don't immediately recognize that that's why they're standing in front of me. Right. <laughs> You're walking down the street. Hey, man. You go, why is this person going, hey, man, to me? What did I do? 
you're not thinking, I'm a big rock star walking down the street. You're not thinking that. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can give you an example. I'm, my wife and I sat down in, <laughs> in Barcelona at a pub, okay? And uh, we're just sitting at the, thing, the table, and this, this guy walks up to the table, and I thought it was the waiter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. I guess not, huh? Yeah. No, he wasn't the waiter. No, but, I didn't think. But, but I mean, like, if you were if if you were me, what would you think? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would think it's the waiter too. Think that somebody's walked up to right to the table. Oh, it must right, be yeah. the waiter. Yeah. Can you please bring us some water? And the guy goes, "I'm not your waiter." <laughs> wow. Wow. That's uh, amazing. 19th release, Impact is imminent, May 20th release. Congratulations, Lips. Uh, great to talk to you. And uh, I can't wait for the tour. You know, I, I can't wait to see you guys. Um, would you like to say anything to the fans out there? Well, I, I, I can't wait to get out there because you can't imagine how the, uh, you know, I, the, this whole COVID thing has put a, a brakes on, a, on, a, on something that I was enjoying so right. thoroughly for for pretty much 13 years straight of uh, write an album go out on tour write an album go out on tour write an album go out right, on yeah. so so uh, all of a sudden write an album go out and not tour uh oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah so it, it's it's yeah i can't wait man so and i'm sure that people are you know, people are excited to be able to go out again. I mean, I just, I'm right now, as we speak, I'm getting over my second case of COVID. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh... but, but, but it's actually interesting. The, the, the injections, the shots. Right. I've had four. Uh -huh. were worse than, were worse than the, the fucking cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not shitting you, man. That's, Totally the truth. It is. I had uh, three shots already, and I think I got sick on all three. You know, I was in. And uh, the shots were the shots worse than the. Yes, first. yes, they yeah, were. They were. Yeah. I, the first one, I thought I was, I, my brain was going to explode. Right, yeah. It's like, wow. oh man, I was so fucking. And yeah. <laughs> shivering yep. and fucking. I was wor worse than I, I've been. Yeah. It, it, anyway, so. <laughs> So if this is this, I'm on my fourth day. Uh huh. Uh, I, I just got a bit of a dry throat, but other than that, clear, no coughing, nothing. Not oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Just whatever. So you know what's COVID now? A, a minor cold. Right. Yeah. So if, for for anybody who's been properly properly. You're going to be okay. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Congratulations, man, on the new disc. Yeah, thanks, man. I, I, I really appreciate that. No problem. Good luck. Okay, man. Talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.